and we should be live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another session with Dental Shadowers. Today, we have a very exciting session with Dr. Hasbun. Dr. Hasbun, thank you so much for joining. And on that note, the floor is yours to take away. All right. So um, as you guys know, I'm a prosthodontist. My name is Marcella Hasbun. Um, I'm going to tell you guys basically my journey, how I became a prosthodontist. Um, and a little bit of like what I do day to day. Um, so personal background, I'm actually from El Salvador, um, born and raised there. I came when I was 12 to the US, so back in 2001. Um, I'm the daughter of dentists. So both my mom and my dad are dentists. My mom is a general dentist, um, consider herself a cosmetic dentist. And my dad used to teach removable, which um, I don't know if you guys have been, have learned this yet, but removable was considered pros up until like maybe the early nineties when implants became available. So my dad essentially was a person honest. Um, and then when I got here, I lived in Idaho for a little bit. Then I lived in Northern California. Um, and then I moved down to Southern California for school. Um, as far as my educational background, I went to community college as soon as I graduated high school. Um, you know, things about being an immigrant when your parents haven't done it here, it's really hard to know, like, you know, the, the right path. So um, went to community college, uh, was met with a lot of resistance. Like people just don't know. Like I, I used to ask like, oh, what, what should I major in? What school should I go to? Everybody was just like, do whatever you want. You know, and when you're like 18, 19, that's like, you're like, well, I, I don't know what I want, right? So, um, but yeah, I transferred um, to USC. Um, I had the goal of being a dental hygienist as a major. Um, and then I did meet with a counselor back in community college and she was like, well, are you ever gonna work as a hygienist? And I'm just like, I know myself and I'm the person that if I take any time off, I just wouldn't have finished. Because you know, you take time off depending on what you're doing with the time off. If you are working and you're making money, there's no way you're going back to school. So um, I ended up transferring to USC because they had the hygiene major, but I also liked that they had different majors. When I was honest with myself and I realized like I'm never gonna work as a hygienist, I decided to change my major to health promotions and disease preventions. It's a major from through the Keck School of Medicine and it's pretty much like public health. So I chose this because in my mind, I always wanted to have a backup plan. So I'm just like, if I don't get into dental school, what am I gonna do with biology? Or, you know, with psychology or something like that. So I was like, I need to do something that I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna help me transition into the workforce, right? So I chose public health. And then um, when I transferred, I wasn't a fall admit, which is one of those things like, you know, everybody wants to transfer for the fall. They accepted me for spring. Um, and so I, I said yes, and I lost the semester. Um, because I was a spring athlete, they told me you're gonna graduate in December essentially. And if I was trying to go straight through, then I had a semester with nothing to do. And so they told me, hey, there's this like new master's program that we're doing, it's through the Keck School of Medicine. Because of your major, you can use some of your major courses for your master's, why don't you give it a shot? And I'm just like, you know why? It's one of those things that hadn't thought of doing a master's before dental school, but might as well. So that meant that, and I graduated the August before dental school. So I didn't have any break before dental school and I was finishing my master's as I was applying. And um, another reason why I did a, everything at USC was because they had a dental school. My main goal in transferring to any school was just to be associated with a dental school. So I could like volunteer and like, know what I wanted to do, like if that was what I really wanted to do, because although I am the daughter of dentists, they don't practice in the US. And dentistry is very different depending on the country that you're from. And so, you know, my mom and my dad they used to have like a one dental, like their office was one dental chair and it was just them. There was no assistant, there's no hygienist, like they did everything. So I just wanted to make sure that it was something that I really wanted for myself and not just because I grew up with it. You know, so while I was in school, I did a lot of volunteering um, and all that stuff and ended up getting into USC. Um, 
and then it's just one of those things that you're already there and you know I kind of just went into bronze um so that's like my educational background um as far as what is bronze this is a, um a straight up from the website the um, go to a pro website is one of the ones for bronze and we're basically general dentists who have a lot more experience in difficult cases. That's the easiest way. That's how I explain it to patients because they're asking me like, what do you do? Why are you different? And it's just like, I mean, we do crowns, bridges, implants, dentures. That's what a general dentist does, but we do it to a different extent. Like we deal with the most difficult cases. Um, and then there's a subspecialty in pros that they deal with maxillofacial prostheses. So this is an extra year after you finish pros. So now you're talking about four years after dental school, right? Um, and they deal with not only defects, so people that are born without an ear um, or a deficient ear, you can place implants around that and you can make a you can make a prosthesis or someone who like lost a body part, um, well, mostly like maxillofacial um, due to cancer or trauma or something like that. So. You know, in this specialty, there's one at UCLA, there's one at the V, uh, most VA hospitals have one. There's one at the Mayo Clinic. Um, and they just really teach you prosthesis, how to deal with cancer patients and how to like transition patients through all that. So it's not for everybody. Like I consider doing it, um, but you almost have to desensitize yourself to death, which is a part that we're, we're not used to dealing with that as dentists, you know, on like MDs. Um, we are not, our patients are not dying when, when they're going through treatment. So that is one extra thing that I just didn't feel that I could handle personally, like in the emotional level. So I didn't go through with it, but it's something like making the prosthesis is something that I like, um, that we're not fully trained on when we're in the pros residency. So if any of you guys are interested in that, like it's a, it's a, it's a, it, the people that actually do it, it, it's amazing, you know? Um, and then you can, you know have the continuity too, because you have kids that are born with their ears and you see them throughout their life as they grow, right? Um, and then let's see. So how are we different from general dentists? Like I told you guys. So this is straight up from the, um, from the prosthodontic website too. So it's like we're the recognized special experts on anything that needs to be replaced. So not that somebody else can do it, um, but we just do it, you know, to a different level. Um, and to a certain extent, someone who needs a prosthodontist, we tell them, you know, insurances cover the average needs of average, of average patients, right? And if you're being referred to a prosthodontist, your case is not average and your needs are not average. So, you know, we're like the captains of the ship, of the ship um, and we tell the periodontist, the orthodontist, the endodontist, like when we need their help. So we're basically like, you know, the quarterbacks of the team. Um, and you guys feel free to stop me if you have any questions, like you don't have to wait until the end. Um, so because of all this that I'm saying, the complaints that a lot of our patients have are just like, you know, I have really worn down teeth. I can't chew. I hate how my teeth look. I've never liked my teeth. I'm missing a tooth. Um, I got in a car accident. I was referred to you. Like they don't even have any idea of why they're being referred to us. They just know that they need our help. So Along with the chief complaint, you also have to look at the history. So like I said, a lot of trauma. We have seen a lot of patients who were in car accidents. The wheel hits their teeth and their teeth are gone. And now it's like they need a dentist for the rest of their life because as they grow, depending on the age, as they grow or as they age, um, they're going to need the teeth replaced. Um, a lot of congenital limits in teeth. And we work closely with orthodontists in that regard. Um, as the patients go through ortho, um, that will they'll either close the gap of the tooth that they're missing, or they'll leave it open for us to place an implant later. But um, implants are placed in the mouth based on growth. So we're never gonna put an implant, something that's really permanent on someone who's like 15 years old. If it's a girl, they're gonna wait till they're like 18, 19. Like me personally, I wait till they're 21. If it's a, if it's a man, they tend to grow like their age. Um, they tend to like continue to grow until they're like maybe like 22, 23. So in the meantime, we either give them something that they take in and out. So like a flipper or we do like a bridge 
that you know replaces the missing space. So obviously that's something that a general dentist can do, and you know, it, it, it is what it is. Like we do the same thing, we just deal with more complicated cases. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the procedures that we perform. So these are some of the cases that I've treated, um, both in residency and in private practice. Um, so the chief complaint of these people, you know, it's like the upper, the upper left. It, this is a 25-year-old guy who um, when he was a kid, he was missing a tooth and the other teeth are not the correct shape or length. So, you know, he had this like done when he was like 15 and now like he's gone through braces and, you know, he's now in like physical therapy school and he's just like, I just want to fix my teeth. Um, you know, the patient next to him, it's like, she's in her fifties, um, lost the teeth due to trauma and then some cavities, you know, and stuff like that. So like teeth have been replaced as we go along. The one next to it, it's this 85 year old female. Um, her husband had a stroke and he had a denture and she was like, he had a, the most difficult time after the stroke. And so in her case, it's just like, you know, I want to get out of that in case anything happens. I just want to have something that I don't take in and out. Um, so, you know, like these are the chief complaints. And it's one of those things that you never know. We get a lot of um, wear. So, you know, the, the right-hand side, the upper and lower right there. Um, those two patients came in saying like, I don't like the, my teeth are worn down. Um, I don't have problems chewing. Like most, most of these cases, they don't have problems chewing unless they're missing their back teeth. Um, uh, let's see, the, the one in the bottom, the second one from your left, um, that was a trauma case. She's 26 years old, um, was in a car accident. Her, she ended up, they saved her teeth and then she ended up losing the teeth. And she has already gone through two rounds. So they placed implants, the implants failed. You guys can think of implants as any other transplant or, or any type of surgery in the body. You're introducing a foreign object into the body. So we still don't know why implants actually attach to the bone. And we don't really know why they fail, why the body rejects them. We have no idea. There are risk factors. So if you guys smoke or uncontrolled diabetics, it's a risk factor. It's not a contraindication. We always tell patients, hey, if you want implants, go for it. Um, we can't guarantee you that they'll integrate or, you know, that it'll be totally successful. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things that we, we always have to get the dental background of the patients. And the bottom left um, patient, she's 30 years old, never liked the shape of her teeth. She had trauma as a child. So one tooth is darker than the other. And she just, she said, hey, like, it's COVID time right now. I'm just sitting at home. I've always wanted to fix my teeth. I, I want veneers, right? So there are patients that come and they tell you specifically, I want veneers. And there's others that are just like, anything you can do to help, I don't know what I need. So, you know, it can range from like a simple sealant. So it's like the simplest procedure in, in dentistry to something as complex as like, hey, we're taking all your teeth out, replacing implants and replacing every single one of your teeth. So um, as far as advice for pre-dental students, I was thinking a lot about this because <laughs> there's a lot of times where depending on the day that you had at the office, right? If it was a really hard day, you really like, you're like, I don't know why I do this, right? Because there are literally patients that you, it's like blood, sweat, and tears. You get their case done and the before and after is amazing. And the patient's like, eh like whatever, or they have like a complaint about like, oh, the case took too long. It's something so like minimal. And you're just like, it really leaves you wondering like why, like why am I even doing this, right? So to give advice to someone who is even just starting to think about dentistry, it's really, really hard to just say like, hey, you know, this is definitely correct for everyone it, it, like, because it's not. I'm gonna be really realistic with you guys. Um, you never know if you if it's for you until you're in it, to be 100% honest. I mean, I'm the daughter of dentists and I'm like, definitely for me, right? But when you're going through it, you're just like, oh, I never knew that this was part of it. Or 
I never knew that I had to consider the patient psychology, right? Like I wish I had taken more psychology classes um, or something like that, right? But so just thinking along those lines, just don't try to have it all figured out. Because I mean, for me, it was like high school, then college, then dental school, then, you know, like then whatever, then just work. I never considered being a specialist until I was already in school. And then I never considered getting the master's. So, you know, that didn't fit into my plan. So, you know, when I was transferring and I didn't get in as a fall admit, that didn't fit into my plan. But, you know, it's like, I tried to not freak out. I had already said yes to UC Davis when I transferred from community college. And, you know, I just, I really wanted to go to USC. So when USC said yes, as a spring admit, I was like, you know what? Let me just go with it, right? So that ties into my next advice for you guys, like just be open to experiences you wouldn't normally say yes to. Because I said yes to USC, even though I was gonna lose a semester. And I said yes to the masters, even though it's more money. And now I graduated a semester later, right? It was like an extra year. Um, and then during that school, I said yes to a lot of things that I wouldn't normally have said yes to, like going on a trip to, you know, like a mission trip or I don't know, like you are, you, it's finals week and someone tells you, hey, let's just go grab some lunch, right? It's like that one hour of sanity that you really needed when normally I would have been like, no, let me just stress out over everything and keep studying, right? It's so easy for us to do that. Um, but along with that too, it's just find a hobby. Like for me, it was, I love to draw. And um, so that was like through dental school. Once I was in residency, I found photography because obviously we have to take photos of, of our cases. Um, but then I also started just doing a lot of portrait photography. You know, whenever I traveled, I did a lot of photography there. So it's just something that you enjoy that when you're doing it, you're not thinking about anything else, you know? So whether it's like a sport or whatever, because it'll help you guys a lot, not only through the on school, but also through, you know, once you're in a career, because at first you'll try to like navigate being somebody's employee, right? You're going to be an associate dentist. And then once you decide to open your own, now it's like you have a baby, right? Having a business is a whole different ball game that nobody teaches you in dental school. And I really do hope, I don't know how, I don't know how far along you guys are in your undergrad careers, but if you can take a business course, go for it because nobody teaches you that at all. And then you graduate and you're like, how do I charge patients? Like, who do I hire? Um, how do the insurances work? What is my practice insurance? All these things that they try to teach you during dental school, but they're still very unknown. Like you tell me how to write a business plan. I had to look it up. Right. So it's all those things. Like that's another piece of advice that I can give you guys. Just like be very diverse, especially when you're applying to dental school. Um, don't like, don't, it's like people hate cookie cutters, right? Or you did this, you did that. Like what sets you apart from everybody else? Um, and that was also another advantage that I had because I went to USC. And when I applied to UC Dental, I already knew the people that were in the admissions committee. And so obviously, like I knew who they were, they probably didn't know who I was. Um, but when I applied, they remember that I was from, from El Salvador. Um, you know, they remember that my parents are dentists and stuff like that. It's just something that you say in your personal statement that they will remember rather than just like, oh, you know, I, I don't know what's, what's the thing nowadays. I don't even know. Like it's been so long since I went to undergrad, but you know, like, oh, I did the biology or I did this. Like, it's, if you're the same as everybody else, it's like, no one's going to remember you. Um, and along with this, because I left my cases to the end, um, advice for dentists, right? You guys wanted some quotes. And I think for me, the very first quote, it like, I mean, this, this quote's kind of, I feel like define me. Um, but really just be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. So it's like, if you guys really want this, fearless, you know, right? Whether it's great or whether it's the shittiest day of your life, you're gonna keep doing it. And then along with that too, when you're in dental school, repetition will make you better, right? I didn't get to be, I always say like to, to people that are asking me, would you do pros again? 
Do you think I should do pros? Obviously, again, it's like, if I ha haven't met you personally, I don't know who you are as a person. The only advice I have is, or like the only thing that I say is you don't graduate pros because you're good. You graduate because you mentally prepared yourself to go through that is the most intense three years of, of your life. Um, you literally like eat, breathe, like everything is teeth and like your cases and everything and articles. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things that you told yourself, no, like this is really what I want. And you like, you're in it every single day. Like I had days when I started at 7 a.m. and I lived maybe an hour away from school. So I would wake up at five be out of my house by like 5.30 so I could get to school by 6.30 because I had class at 7 a.m. And then we had class until 11 p.m. So it's like an extremely long day. You don't graduate because, oh, you know, you cruised. You know, it's like you really had to want to be there and like to get through it. So the other thing is like to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. So obviously just say true to yourself you know it's like there's a lot of people that wanted to go into specialty just because somebody else wanted to you know a lot of my friends became orthodontists and I was just like no I I don't like it you know, I'm going to be true to what I like and you know my strength and just do something that makes me happy and at the end of the day if, if you want to be a general dentist like go for it you know there's nothing wrong with that right and um Along with that too, we had maybe three people in my class who didn't graduate because they just, they realized that dentistry wasn't for them, which kind of sucks to realize that while you already spent all your time and energy trying to get into dental school and then you're like a year or two in, but we had one girl who just could not like, at the end of the day, you work with your hands. And the work that you do defines you, right? So patients are going to come to you if you're good. Um, and so this girl was just, you know, studying and like be, she was in the lab and she was practicing, practicing. Like I would see her more there than anybody else. And I heard one of the professors tell her one time was like, I see you here. It's not for lack of trying. I just don't think that like your hands could do what your brain is telling them to do. And that's what I'm telling you guys. There's a lot of things that you don't know until you're in it. And she realized, she's like, there's just no way that I can do this. And she left school and she became a, she has a PhD in psychology, which, you know, she's, she's doing fine, right? There was another guy who, as soon as we started, he was just like, no, not for me. And he got offered, I, th I remember the Dean of Admissions told him like, you know, just take a year off, like think about it, you know? And he's just like, no, I know it's not for me. And he dropped out. So it's just one of those things like be true to who you are. I know it's a lot of work. And once you get there, you're just like, I worked so hard to get here. And some people like just like push through and I end up graduating, but they're miserable the rest of their lives because they did something they're not really passionate about just because they had already done the work to get there. Like there's really no timeline to this. There's no right or wrong at the end of the day. It's just, what do you want that will make you happy? And if that's not dentistry, it, it's okay, right? It's just, it's one of the, there's a million careers out there. You know, this is, obviously this is something that interests you guys. Just the best advice is just be true to yourself always, right? Um, you know? And then if you're the first to do something, like the last quote, if you're the first to do something. So for me, like I'm an immigrant, I'm a woman. So here I'm a minority. I'm not only in dentistry, which a lot of women are minority in dentistry, I, I'm a prosthodontist. So in pros, it's a very male dominated um, specialty as opposed to pediatrics. Pediatrics is very female dominated. Um, so I graduated, the graduating class was five. I was the only woman. So now if a woman comes to me and tells me, hey, I wanna be, I wanna do pros, I will absolutely like, not that I wouldn't help a man, but it's just like, I know what you're gonna go through. So if I was able to do it and I forged a path, right? I'm more than willing to help somebody else out. So that's what that means, the last one, especially as a dentist, having gone through it, be willing to help somebody else, you know, to like walk in the same path that you have. So um, I don't know if you guys wanna ask questions right now because the next slides that I have are cases. 
Um, so, you know, I can go through the cases or we can, we can ask questions at the end or we can ask questions right now. I'm totally. Is it okay if we do it at the end? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah. So I'll go through all the cases. So I chose cases that are, um, I wouldn't say simple, but there's a lot of things that you guys probably haven't even heard of. I was looking at the YouTube videos and you guys heard a lot about, like, I think I saw someone teaching you guys how to do a composite. I think I saw orthodontics. So that you guys have never had a prosthodontist, um, but there's a lot of procedures that we get taught while in residency that they're just now starting to teach in dental school. Um, I was still part of the class that got taught amalgams, so the silver fillings. They still teach them, but I can tell you from experience, I've only done one in my life, and it was in Peru when I went to the mission trips. Nobody wants silver in their mouth in America, at least. So they're still teaching it because it teaches you guys to scale, it teaches you guys to prep a tooth, but no patient's ever going to be like, I want all the silver, right? So I chose procedures that haven't even really been taught. They're just now starting to be taught in school. And um, I chose a case that it's like limited to aesthetics, but I solved the problem. So this case was referred to us because we are prosthodontists. Um, and it was like a limited space case. And there's another one that I did when I was a resident um, and it involves both uh, root canals and also surgeries. So it was, it's a more